Hello and welcome back. In the last video we showed you the results of one of our older wines. The difference from this wine and the other ones was we used frozen fruits instead of juice to make it. Now that we have a free white mouth fermenter we decided to make another wine from frozen berries. So today's video will be part 1 of how to make wine from frozen raspberries. For this fermentation we used 3 kg of raspberries. Which brand or shop is not important as long as there are no extra conservatives added, which can have a negative effect on your brew. Be sure to defrost the berries and warm them up naturally to room temperature before you put them in with the yeast. Same goes for the water. We use 6 liters of lukewarm water. We have a thermometer, which we use to make sure that the temperature is not too high or low. If you have one, that's great, otherwise it should be not that big of an issue, as long as you let it sit for a while. We also put some water in a small cup to dissolve the yeast. This way the yeast activates which should lead to easier and earlier start of the fermentation. This time we used our Lalvin 71B yeast. This yeast is less resilient and produces less alcohol on average than the EC1118. But it's not a problem for us as we want to go a bit lower on the alcohol volume. After we stir the yeast we continue the process with the bucket. To not have raspberries floating in your brew, we put them in a bag. A simple mash bag does the trick. This way it will be much easier to remove the berries in the future. Carefully drop the berries in the mash bag. Of course, with a second pair of hands, this whole task is much easier. Be sure to also catch all of the juices from the defrosting process. Tie a strong knot so the bag does not open accidentally when mixing in the sugar or later when you want to remove the berries. The next step is to calculate and add the sugar needed. The amount of sugar within the 2 kg of berries is 123 grams. Keeping that in mind, we add 1.24 kg total. The yeast type Lalvin 71B has an alcohol tolerance of about 14%. We expect our wine to go all the way dry, which should result in an alcohol volume roughly around 11 to 12%. But of course the yeast is impacted by many factors. And that is why we need to use the hydrometer to fully understand what happens with our fermentation. Now a little tip. It is much easier to stir the sugar in if you put the berries in afterwards. The last step before we put in the yeast is to measure the gravity with a hydrometer. Don't shy away from oxygenating the brew as the yeast needs it to create a big and healthy colony to ferment our soon to be wine. The original gravity we measured was 1.078. Let us quickly explain how we calculated the sugar added. As mentioned, from the 3 kg of raspberries, we get 123 grams of sugar on top of the 1.24 kg of sugar. This means after all sugar is extracted from the berries, we have 1.36 kg of sugar dissolved in our 6 liters. That translates to roughly 227 grams of sugar per liter. Therefore, when reading gravity, we have to take into consideration that the correct gravity would be around 1.086 and not 1.078 as measured, which would give us an alcohol volume somewhere between 11 and 12%. How do we calculate this? There is a lot of formulas out there. The one we use is the most popular one. Original gravity minus final gravity times 131.25. In this case, if our wine goes dry, this is the calculation. 1.086 minus 1 times 131.25. That equals to 11.3%. Some other formulas that people use are original gravity minus final gravity times 135. Or you can simply go online, type alcohol by volume calculator and you will get tons of results. They will vary slightly but should be in the same ballpark. Keep in mind that we are home brewers and everything we do will be an approximation. We will do more videos in the future explaining all the calculations in more detail, so stay tuned. 
If the gravity of your brew is too low for your liking, you can repeat the process, simply add more sugar and measure again until you are happy with your original gravity. At this point, we are happy, so we add the yeast. Some of it might stick to the cup, as in our case. Simply take some water from the brew, for example from the measuring cylinder, and mix the leftover yeast in until nothing is left in the cup. Lastly, we close our bucket, because there is nothing more to add. Fill the airlock with some sanitizer fluid, so no bug that enters the airlock will survive. If you want, you can use any high percentage alcohol, but why waste good vodka? Now our brew is ready to sit. We will update you in a later video about the process. We hope you enjoyed the video. Consider liking the video, subscribing and let us know in the comments what would you like to see next. Have a nice day and see you later.